government that still delivers quality services that are outlined in that little blue book we call the Constitution. And um, we're, we're going to have to defend those when we go home. So I, I'm, I'm not a big unallocated cut guy. Um, some folks are. And uh, we'll have to see what the individual committees bring back to the table. And I would just add that um, the Senate's perspective uh, for the past two years and now going forward into this year is that structural change has to take place. That requires an actual piece of legislation. So you'll see the Senate continuing to advance legislation. It's an example we're working um, off the indirect expenditure report to introduce a piece of legislation that would um, eliminate or suggest that we should eliminate some uh, credits that are currently being taken against taxes. So I, I just to dovetails become such a common thing to say in these things, but so I won't say it. But uh, the what you're going to see from the Senate is that we're going to pass our budget. We're going to get um, something across the finish line that um, essentially deals with the vast um, proportion that matters of our fiscal gap. You're going to be then you're going to see us working on things for 2018. We, we know that on some of this complicated structural reform legislation that it takes um, beginning this year working over the interim and delivering something early next January in order for those um, structural changes to successfully occur and for it to be meaningful legislation that is well considered instead of dropping something during session that um, doesn't get its due process um, with things that are this complicated. So once we complete, we hope that by the end of March, beginning of April, that we're going to be um, completed with our FY17 or our, our FY18, but it's this session's work and working on preparing for next session. That is the process, and uh, we're we're um, however they choose to deliver a final budget, um, we will deliver ours, and we will negotiate at the uh, conference table, and we'll we'll um, compromise where we need to to hopefully get out of here in 90 days with uh, a fiscal solution and a budget that everyone can leave the room where they're at least, uh, you know, the definition of a per perfect deal. Everyone's equally unhappy. Becky? To build a little off of what Andrew asked earlier, um, you know, one thing that the House House leaders have been fond of say, asking is, what kind of Alaska do you want? And we've already heard concerns about um, the numbers of prosecutors that have been cut in recent years and the impact that that's had and impacts in other areas as well. So when, you know, Senator Machicki, you had mentioned um, the cuts that we've seen so far and having no intention to climbing back where we are, where we were, um, for the Senate majority with um, the spending limit and an appropriation limit, um, do you worry about boxing us in or limiting us too much? And I guess the question would be also from your perspective, what kind of Alaska do you see? Well, I know the kind of Alaska that I see and that is an Alaska that does deliver the services that are required by our Constitution. I want people to be safe. I want people to be well educated. I want them to drive on quality roads. I mean, they're, they're the clear cut services that we deliver. However, we have added to that menu in ways that are very expensive. And some of them are not related to what's happening in the courts and what's happening in the schools. So uh, my vision is that there's going to be a shift somewhat of where we invest um, in providing a quality state government at a reasonable price. And that doesn't mean that it doesn't leave room for some escalation if we, as we've designed into our spending limit. Um, and it doesn't mean that we won't support some shifting this year. I mean, we, we agree. However, um, for some, their vision is, just like Andrew's question, uh, we're, there's no way if we, were gonna, if we were to deliver draconian cuts to social services, there's no way that we can replace them with broad-based taxes. So we're looking for a way to balance that in a way that we 
also make the best use of our earnings um, and deliver quality services, but there may be so, some of those services where we've sort of gone over the top on delivering things we simply can't afford. And that's what our exercise is about. So with, with the runs, and we'll be sharing the runs as we review the bill, but the status quo runs still work with the earnings reserve adjustment. Um, and keep in mind, is delivering from what we can see right now about a thousand dollar well a thousand dollar dividend for the next three years and then it starts to escalate with the percentage it'll be taking from the earnings but i think it was two years ago there was an 870 dollar dividend this will level off div dividends as well in those years where they would have been um below that number there's only been one two thousand seventy dollar dividend so if the new reset is we're basing everything on a two thousand dollar dividend it seems like more of an impact if we look at the average over 35 years right 35 years um, we realize that we're actually delivering the same amount to those underprivileged folks that counted on that dividend um, as they have in the past so what's more important that they have billions in services available or that they get a higher dividend today. I, I, my argument is that we, we are looking out for them and ensuring that they have adequate services available that they count on every day. And we're still receiving a typical dividend. I don't want to say average, I'll say typical. Liz? Liz Rains with KTVA again. The House majority has coalesced around the, this idea of a comprehensive fiscal plan, and um, according to them, it, it appears to be beyond the earnings draw and some sort of broad-based tax like the income tax and some change to oil tax credits, neither of which the Senate has shown an appetite for this year. And I'm wondering, in, in trying to wrap up work in 90 days for lawmakers, if the Senate um, is not willing to budge on the income tax proposal, does that mean there's leeway there for some sort of compromise when it comes to oil tax credits? Liz, thanks for the question. So we have drawn from Alaska's uh, reserves for the past six years. And uh, the governor, through multiple uh, special sessions, offered uh, a variety of ways to close the fiscal gap. The Senate is focused on the only thing that we believe can actually help Alaska and stabilize Alaska's. Uh, we're in a recession. We have the highest unemployment rate in the nation, 2% above the national average. Uh, we have to look at how we can solve the problem, right? And so the Senate's perspective is you have to do what impacts us the most first. And so I don't think everything is off the table beside what the Senate wants to talk about. We're willing to negotiate. We're willing to look at all of the House's ideas. The problem is, and the reason I bring up the special sessions, is as people try to hold out for what they think has to be part of the whole package, Alaska loses. Six years of draws on reserves, a loss of $200 million of potential earnings that we would have never had to even say the word tax if we would have had those reserves in the bank to draw off of. And so from my perspective, I'm trying to focus my community the state of Alaska and the legislative body into one issue. The one issue is what can solve most of our problem first. The economists that showed up in, uh, and testified before our Labor and Commerce Committee, the Committee on the Economy, is talking about not doing everything at once. The Senate is just saying, do the best thing that we can do for the people of Alaska first. Other questions? Becky? Since the Senate last year acted on a permanent fund bill and the House didn't, is there an expectation in the Senate that the House needs to send over a POMV bill first, or do you have a sense yet for how those bills will move between bodies? Yeah. I've, I've got a follow up on your three senators as well. Go for it. Oh, I'm just going to say we're, we, we made. We laid our plan out before the session began, and we're not doing business as usual. We're going to get our work done and pass it over. If something comes over in the meantime, then we will deal with the bill that comes over. Um, we've even stated that if the budget doesn't come over on time, we're going to pass our own budget and send it over. I mean, we're, 
we're not going to do the typical waiting for day 89 to be fumbling around with how to get out of here on time. We're going to get our work done, and we hope that they will join us at the table to help us do that. Um, so I, we, uh, we're working on a bill. You're going to see us have an aggressive schedule. It's going to be scrubbed as carefully as ever. Keep in mind that we passed the bill. We believed in the bill last year. Not everyone in our majority, but certainly enough for the bill to pass um, with a handy margin. So it's, it's not like it's a new bill. There are a few differences in here, such as the spending cap, but, but we are evaluating it as carefully, but have knowledge of the effects of this bill for the last year and a half as well. I mean, we've spent a lot of time on it, spent a lot of time on it during the interim. We're going to do our work, and we're going to pass it over, and uh, we, um, I don't want to say I hope that they keep pace as, as though they're not equipped to do so, but we're hoping to get this 90% solution across the finish line without politically complicating it with the other issues. And so think about it. You have this one thing that everyone in this building knows needs to pass. Everyone in the legislature knows this bill needs to pass. Now, they say different things about it, and at election time, they said some things about it that perhaps didn't make it sound like they knew it needed to pass. But if you ask them quietly in the halls, all 60 legislators know it needs to pass. So there's this, this piece of a 90% solution that tells the world we're, we have dealt with, we've essentially dealt with our fiscal problem. Then you add the interest from the House majority about taxes and other things, and that comes coupled with deep cuts from the Senate, and suddenly everyone is having a very difficult time getting along. So we're hoping to solve the one issue, get it out of the way, and then come back and talk about the areas where we're less likely to agree that can politically complicate a solution going forward. We have time for Maybe one more question. One more. Nat, you get the last, last word. Um, Nat Hurst with Alaska Dispatch News. Is there anything specific that either of you guys can point to as far as what will make for a different uh, and maybe more efficient process of sort of negotiation at the at the very end of session this year. Thanks, Nat. I think Senator Machicki just spoke to it. We're trying to get uh, what will a proposal uh, across to the other side or received from the other side that solves the majority of Alaska's problem. Uh, if we want to fight about the budget, uh, we think that fight is. Uh, it happens. It happens every year. Uh, there's a little bit different dynamic uh, that's going to happen this year. We have a new House minority. We have a new House majority. The House majority uh, is learning their way. It's the first time that they've walked in some of these waters. And so I, I know that it will be different. But in the end, we're trying to do what is best for Alaska as soon as possible. And I just would note that we did that last year. The Senate had the budget over to the House so that we had almost 30 days to negotiate any budget compromises that we wanted to make. So we're trying to allow that room again. The Senate is focused on what voters have asked us to do, get your job done in 90 days, and uh, go home. So I guess the, the question is, sir, if you, if you guys did you know, the early budget last year and, and that and the, and the ending outcome, you know, even if in your view it was not like the Senate's fault was what it was, what is different about this year that's going to lead to a different outcome, I guess? We're focusing on what solves Alaska's fiscal challenges. And, and what, what's also different is 740,000 minus 60 Alaskans out there are putting a lot more pressure on us to get our work done this year and get it done in time and not let it drag through the summer. Folks are going to have to compromise. We're going to have to compromise when it comes to um, budget issues just like they're going to have to compromise. Last year, I, I just wish we would have quantified compromise because you look at the things and I could make you, Nat, I could make you a list of the things that the Senate did to try to pull things across the finish line last year. We dragged our members across on several bills and several um, issues on the budget. I can quantify the amount of compromise that occurred. And I wish there was a way that we had this whiteboard running because it's difficult sometimes when you feel like you've gotten there and you see someone somewhat of a lack or a resistance to compromising on the other side and the things that matters most. So that's why we're talking about isolating this bill 
in uh, getting it out of the way, knowing that we're okay as far as a fiscal gap goes for the greatest proportion of that gap, and then we'll we'll be happy to have those other discussions. And thank you. Great questions this morning. If you have any follow-up questions, go through Daniel. We're happy to provide additional information if you need it throughout the day. We have a busy schedule, but uh, we're available when you need us. Thank you.